And now, What's My Line? Brought to you by Stop It Spray Deodorant. Poof, there goes perspiration. Poof Deodorant Body Powder, the body powder you spray. The Nest Shampoo, the new flowing cream shampoo. All in the first truly functional cosmetic containers. Far easier to use. All created by Dr. Jules Montagnier, the famous cosmetic chemist. Time now to enjoy What's My Line? And now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, and who has just returned from the coronation, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, brilliant young gentleman, who I'm happy to be sitting next to again tonight, Mr. Steve Allen. Thank you, Dorothy. And uh, before we turn to my left, Dorothy, I'm very sure that the ladies would be very thrilled to get a good look at your gown. It's a bit of an unusual procedure. Why don't you stand up for just a moment? This is uh, Dorothy's actual... It's her actual coronation uh, dress. Is that right, Dorothy? That's right. It's, uh, it's made of silver lame cloth, and it has almost... Oh, Millions and millions of pearls, anyway. How many thousand of pearls? 14,000. Wow. <laughs> and uh, Dorothy's taking off her Fort Knox right after the show, so <laughs> we'll move along now. On my left now, I'd like you to uh, meet the charming young lady who is a member of the English What's My Line panel, Miss Barbara Kelly. Thank you. And on my left, one of the handsomest young men in a city of handsome men, Mr. Bennett Cerf. Why, Bennett. <laughs> On my left, wearing his coronation costume, it's a gray suit with uh, pink BVDs and a uh, celluloid collar by American Cyanamide, Mr. John Charles Daly. My tailor is a Luxembourg. And uh, may I say, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line, presented by Stop It. I think probably you'd all like to know that Arlene Francis tonight is in London and appearing on the BBC version of What's My Line, and we're very pleased and happy to have with us Miss Barbara Kelly as our guest from the BBC program. Once again, as usual, we are going to bring before our cameras some people who've been nice enough to come and visit us, bring with them some interesting occupations, which we trust will give the panel some trouble so they can carry home some prizes. We'll also have a famous guest challenger before the panel a bit later in the program, but now let's get things underway. It's time for the experts to meet our first challenger, so would you sign in, please? Mrs. Harry Sells, Mrs. Harry Sells. <laughs> Would you be good enough to tell us first of all where you're from? Chesterfield, Indiana. Chesterfield, Indiana. Well, I must say it's nice to have somebody from Indiana with us. Got some uh, three people from Manhattan and one young lady from London that would like to know you better. So would you walk down in front of the panel, please? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I haven't looked at a hand in two weeks, may I? <laughs> Thank you. All right, now, Mrs. Sells, if you'll come over here and join me, I think you may know that at this point, we always give the panel one free, wild, and happy guess as to what your line may be on the basis of their brief acquaintanceship with you, and we always begin the wild guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she's a lady mayor. A lady mayor, Mr. Allen. I think Mrs. Harry sells. <laughs> Miss Kelly. And I think she sells perfume. Mr. Seth. I think she sells sea cells by the seesaw. <laughs> well, that one. Nobody is right. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Sells, and at the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. But the panel's going to have to dig. <laughs> All right, Mr. Sells, I think the rules are probably known to you. Each time you get a no answer from the panel, it costs the panel $5. We keep a record of that up here. Ten no's, and you have won the game. The last and only bit of help we're going to give you, Mrs. Sells, is self-employed. With that, let's begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett, sir. Mrs. Sells, you look like a hearty outdoors type to me. Do you do some work outdoors? Yes. Uh, would you have anything to do with some kind of a farm? Yes. Does this farm uh, raise uh, produce rather than animals? 
No. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, are you then involved with animals? Yes. Are they domestic animals? Yes. Are they four-legged animals? Yes. Are they nice little four-legged animals? <laughs> what is a nice little four-legged animal? <laughs> well, One you know, not a friendly type. Yes. Yes, they're friendly types. Mm -hmm. uh, are they um, larger than cats? Yes. Are they larger than little baby lambs? Yes. Are they larger than big lambs? Are they larger than big lambs? No. No, I don't think so. Two down and eight to go. <laughs> Mr. Allen. Are they ever eaten? Oh, Steve. Are they ever eaten? Not while oh, alive. Yes. Yeah, we are very unhappy, I have to tell you, but they are. Oh. Uh, are they almost always eaten, eventually? No. No, not almost. I wouldn't say so. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Kelly. Mrs. Sells, is there any other use that any part of this animal is put to other than just for food? Yes. Would this other thing be uh, some kind of leather or wool? <laughs> yes. One or the other. Well, I'll make a, a guess. Is it wool? No. no. Just four oh. down and six to go. <laughs> no more guess, Mr. Seth. Well, then, is some part of this animal used for uh, leather goods of some sort or other? Yes. Is this, uh, would you put this animal in the cattle family? Pardon us, we'll have a conference last about two hours. Yeah. I think we can put it in the general classification of the cattle family, yes. Would the young of this uh, species be called a calf? No. No. That would make it five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Remember, I said the general category of the animal family. Whoa. Uh, does this uh, animal get about quite a good deal if left to its own devices? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it good at climbing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is it in the goat family? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is it in fact a goat? Yes, yeah. that's right. It is a goat. And Mrs. Mrs. Sell Sell is raises a, goats? Raises goat a goat or herd? a goat farmer. That's oh. right. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Well, Mr. Sell did rather well with the prizes, and panel, you did rather well with the occupation. Let's see what you can do with another challenger. So, uh, now let's see if we can't have another challenger to sign in. Would you sign in, please, sir? Max? Max Gilgore, is that right, sir? Where are you from, sir? Philadelphia. From Philadelphia. Well, let's see, that's, uh, Philadelphia's only about 90 miles, so... 94 does, uh, miles. 94 miles, well, there's about 94 feet. Would you take a walk down in front of the panel? It's a gorgeous American time. Thank you. <laughs> it's a gorgeous American corporation. <laughs> All right, Mr. Gilgore, now if you'll come over here and join me. Uh, at this point, the panel gets that one free guess as to what your line may be. We begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think he's a croupier. A croupier, Mr. Allen. I think he's a politician. Miss Kelly. I think he works for the Weather Bureau and has lost his thermometer. <laughs> Mr. Sell. I think he stands in front of the 30th Street station and sells Saturday evening posts. No, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mr. Gilgore. At the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. <laughs> the panel's got a dig. Mr. Gilgore, you know the rules. Five dollars every no answer. Ten no's, you've won. We keep the record up here so you'll always know where you stand. And Mr. Gilgore is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with, um, Steve Allen. Is there a product connected with your work, sir? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it the sort of thing I might be able to hold in my two hands? Yes. <laughs> uh, would I be correct, John, in guessing from the reaction of the audience that if I were to have one of these right here now in my hands, I would get an even bigger laugh? Is that true? <laughs> yes, I can think of several situations which would make it quite mm -hmm. funny, as a matter of fact. Is it then uh, the sort of thing that might make people happy? Yes. Yes, it could. Um, might you find any of these? Might they be ever? Might they ever be put to use uh, when people gather for social functions? 
<laughs> it's a funny program, but I can never appreciate it. You know? <laughs> You're doing very well. Uh, social functions. Might you ever find one or more of these uh, in a room where a cocktail party is taking place? <laughs> uh, this has to be either a liquid or a solid. <laughs> Could be nitrous <laughs> oxide. <laughs> All right. Uh, am I correct in guessing that this in itself is not a stimulant? <laughs> Yes, I would say that he was correct in guessing that this was not itself a stimulant. Mm -hmm. Is it then, since it might be uh, found at a cocktail party, something that a stimulant might be put into? <laughs> Wait a minute, I gotta have a question. <laughs> well, Mr. Gilgore wants to hold very close to the letter on this, Mr. Allen, and uh, so we'll give you a no answer on that, although it's a wonderful idea. One down and nine to go, Miss Kelly. Mr. Gilgore, um, you can see this. You can see this object that you produce. Oh, if it's around, uh, you know, in front of your eyes, you can see it. Is it all right for it to be around? Yes, it's all right for it to be around. Mm -hmm. It's all right if I have one. <laughs> Would I like having one? Yeah. I'd enjoy it? Yeah. Well, Would... you know, that... Yeah, I guess you'd enjoy it. <laughs> Would I need anybody else to enjoy it with me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, Miss Kelly. That's two dollars eight to go, Mr. Stern. Mr. Gilgo, I, I rather gather from the laughter that this might just possibly be some article of female apparel. Am I correct? Yes. It is something that is worn by women. Yes. And would I also be correct in my assumption that it is not entirely visible on ordinary occasions? That is, if uh, Miss, let's say that uh, uh, one of the girls on the program was walking down the street, uh, this would not show, would it? No. It's worn underneath outer garments. Yes, yes. It, yes, it would not show, no. That's right. Uh, <laughs> is this by any chance any member of the Brasier family? <laughs> Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, would this be purchased at a lingerie shop? <laughs> would this be purchased at a lingerie shop? Yes. Yes. See, I learn things every day. Go on, Uh, is it worn below the shoulders? Yes. And it's above the hemline? Yes. <laughs> You're speaking of the standard hemline, of course. <laughs> is it ever worn below the belt line? Yes. Whatever it is, you go ahead and get it. <laughs> <laughs> In order to get into this, would you put your feet into it rather than putting it over your head? <laughs> Pretending he doesn't know. Come, come now. You make him, Mr. Gilgore. Well, things are getting tougher every minute. We're going to have a small concert. You're going to have to show us after this. Okay. We've figured out an answer. Mr. Gilgore, will you give the answer? Sometimes. Uh, <laughs> uh, when you have put this on, uh, does it have um, a good effect upon your figure? Yes. Sometimes. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it has an improving effect upon a lady if she wears yes. one. Does it help hold her together in any way? <laughs> <laughs> you mean, is she coming apart? Will this hold her together? Well, you know. <laughs> Well, is it in the girdle family? Uh, partly. Uh, is it any type of corsetry? Yes. Well, is it a corset? Yes. But Do you make corsets? Make corsets will be no. four down and six to go, Mr. Allen. Oh, <laughs> model. Very anyway, good, Dorothy. 
Uh, does he sell corsets? Sells corsets, is right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this, I must say, Mr. Uh, Gilgore is with, I think, the Black Corset Company, and it's this kind of corset you step into them, you put them over your head, you open them up, you tie yourself in, you wrap them yourself. <laughs> Strange kinds, but wonderful corset. Thanks very much, sir, and you've done fairly well. We hope you had a lot of fun. It was nice to have you. <laughs> now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. The panel would recognize our guest right away, so they have been provided with blindfolds. Are they all in place, panel? Yes, John. Yes. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? In the case of our mystery celebrity, we dispense with all the usual preliminaries, get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with uh, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you in the entertainment business? I am. <laughs> uh, are you in show business? I am. Are you a performer? Yes, ma'am. Uh, have you ever appeared in motion pictures? Yes, ma'am. Do you sing? I am. Hmm? Uh, do you ever appear in presentation houses? No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. Um, are you in any sense uh, an amusing person, or do you ever function as a comedian? <laughs> no three. Two down and eight to go. That's no three. Oh, thank you. Uh, two down and eight to go, Miss Kelly. This American language I can't get used to. <laughs> Uh, do you dance also? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Seth. I didn't hear your answer when you said, do you sing? You do sing? Aya. I still don't hear you. That's aya. That's an old New England phrase meaning yes. Oh. <laughs> it's a German word for eggs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Have you ever sung in any kind of a nightclub? Yep. Yeah. Are you at present doing some kind of an act at a nightclub within 20 miles of New York City. Oh, that's four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Would you say that you were primarily a singer or a singing actor uh, rather than just a dramatic actor? Yeah. In other words, when you have appeared in motion pictures, you have almost always sung. Yeah. Are you a baritone? Yes, sir. Are you a pop baritone rather than Are operatic? you asking if he's a father, may I? <laughs> no. No, he'll know what I mean. <laughs> uh, are you in the jukeboxes rather than in the long-haired albums? Sorry. Nope. That makes it five down and five to go, Mr. Allen. Oh, he's on you. are long hair. <laughs> well, reasonably long hair, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Are you, uh, do you have uh, dark hair? No. Nope. <gasps> six down and four to go, Miss Kelly. And Miss Kilgallen just got a weenie. <laughs> Did she? <laughs> Is that good? Oh, yeah, that's fine. With you, you are a blonde? Did you make um, things like Rosemary and... Did you? I, uh... Oh, dear, how exciting. Are you Nelson Eddy? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I wanted to explain, uh, actually, we were quite correct in the answer, because you did say at present, Mr. Eddie is going to be in the Copacabana, but beginning next Thursday. If you hadn't put the at present, then we would have given you a yes answer. I was thinking of Tony Martin. Were you? <laughs> oh, I just wanted to be sure you understood. Nelson Eddie, thanks very much, sir, for taking time out to be our guest. It was Thank nice you, to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. with another challenger. Would you sign in, please, ma'am? Carol? Frank. Frank. Very good uh, first of all, is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. It's Mrs. Frank. 
And now, would you tell us where you're from? Atlantic Beach, Long Island. Atlantic Beach, Long Island. Would you take a brief walk down in front of the panel, please? Good evening. Would you like to look at my hand? Would <laughs> <laughs> you like to be mine? I can see them. Thank you. All right, now, Mrs. Frank, will you come over here, please, and sit down next to me? And I think you know that this time we go to The Wild Guest, which we always begin with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Well, I think she plays a musical instrument, possibly a harp. Plays the harp. Mr. Allen. She's wearing four diamond rings. I think she works for a jewelry store. <laughs> Miss Kelly. I think she's a lift operator. I beg your pardon? Oh, I'm sorry. Elevator. Elevator. Oh, an elevator operator. <laughs> Mr. Sir. Well, she has a very intelligent face. I think she writes. Nobody has it right. We let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Frank. At the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. But, uh, Mrs. Frank, the panel has to dig. I'm sure you know the rules. Each no answer brings in one flip of the card at $5. Ten no's, you've won the game. Mrs. Frank is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with, uh, Miss Kelly. Well, Mrs. Frank, I'm going to have to get this out of the way. Does your very charming appearance have anything at all to do with what you do? No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Is there a product involved in what no. you do? That's two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Then you deal in services. Yes, ma'am. Uh, are your services uh, in any way connected with the arts, broadly speaking? No. The... No, not even broadly speaking. <laughs> That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Allen. Do you deal with both men and women? Yes. Uh, do you ever deal with children? Yes. Is the fact that you deal with children of considerable importance in... Uh, in uh, no. 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 Not uh, terribly. That's four down and six to go, Miss Kelly. Do you travel at all in your work? No. Uh, we'll have a small conference. Do you travel at all in your work? Um, That's from... I think we would want to be completely fair and say that, um, <coughs> Mrs. Frank does travel a bit. Well, do, do you give any kind of advice or help? Yes. And do you go to the people rather than the people coming to you? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sometimes. Fingers. <laughs> a loose yes. All right, we give you a qualified yes. You but, they, but they do come to you, too. Yes. And you give them advice on some particular thing. Is it some kind of problem that, that has anything at all to do with the home in no. any way? No. no? Mm. You can't even broaden it far enough to get a yes on that. That's five down and five to go. Mr. Sir. Mrs. Frank, you're salaried, you say? Yes, sir. Do you work uh, for a profit-making organization? Yes, sir. Would the people you work for have uh, some kind of special training? Like doctors of some sort? No. Mm, thank you very much, Mr. Sir. That's six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you do anything besides advise people? Is there something else in connection with your work that... You mean, uh, have a facility of her own? We're well, not quite sure what you mean, Miss Dorothy. I was just wondering if advice was the only thing that she did, or was there something else in her work that she accomplished besides advising people? Yes, I would say we could say yes, yes. to that. Mm -hmm. uh, do you show them how to do anything or yes. demonstrate anything? Yes. Uh, is it uh, a manufactured article that you demonstrate? No. That's seven down and three to go, Mr. Allen. Does what you show them how to do make them happy when they do it? Yes. Does it have anything to do with recreation? Yes. With sport? Yes. Here's sport. <laughs> <laughs> with an outdoor sport? Yes. Do you wear shorts? Yes. He hopes. <laughs> hmm. Is there a ball used in the sport that you... Uh... No. No ball. No, terribly sorry. That's eight down and two to go. And as a matter of fact, as I look at the clock, we're not going to be able to take it Thank any further goodness. along. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. And sure. you're probably, probably just dying to know what uh, Mrs. Frank does. You were getting close, I think, water skiing instructor. <laughs> and Mrs. Frank, you get the full prize of $50. We ran out of time by default. And our thanks for being our guest thanks. in What's My Line. It was nice to have you with us. Good night. Good to see you. And now, in just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to give you a preview look at one of our guests whose line our panel is going to be asked to try and identify on next week's program. Next week at the same time, our panel of experts will be asked, what's my line by this man? Would you know his occupation? Could you guess what he's up to every day in the week? Well, for the answers to these and a good many other questions, some of them I trust highly amusing, be sure and be back with us again next Sunday night at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time 
when once again Stop It invites you to play What's My Line. For other localities, check your local listings for the date and time of our weekly series. And don't forget What's My Line on CBS Radio on Wednesday night. Until we see you again then, this is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Good night, Steve. All right, Dorothy, and a very particular and grateful goodbye at this time to the young lady who will be winging her way back to England this week to appear in the London version of What's My Line, Miss Barbara Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Allen. And ladies and gentlemen, I would just like to say that, of course, although I envy Miss Kilgall in witnessing the crowning of our queen, my trip to New York has some wonderful memories for me, too. I would just like to say thank you for everybody, and thank you, Mr. C. I'd like to tell you one thing about Barbara. A lot of people have asked me about her accent. She doesn't sound English. Well, I've discovered she was born in Vancouver, Canada. <laughs> Good luck to you. Thank Good night, you. John. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on Hot My Line.